Hi everyone, uh, this is a short video around bridging and um, a bit of a conversation around um, what bridging finance is, what my thoughts are on it and uh, and some of the pitfalls that you might want to be aware of if you are considering bridging finance. So let's start with what bridging finance is. So in effect, if you're buying a house and uh, typically in an auction uh, setting, you are going to be tied down with some certain timelines, which is 28, usually 28 uh, working days or 20 working days I should say 28 days uh, completion time so that leaves you only kind of four working uh, weeks to be able to tie this uh, purchase up so when the gavel falls you pay 10% of the deposit to the auctioneers and the rest of it you have to finance whether you do it by cash uh, or otherwise so typically a lot of people including myself we've all been down the route at some point of using bridging finance to finance some of these deals uh, Finance companies, uh, unlike uh, mortgages, they are they are able, they're a bit more nimble, they are able to move a bit quicker than your traditional mortgage company. They will tend to finance things that a mortgage company will not finance. So if a house is a bit more, uh, well, let's say it's failing EPC, it's uh, not got radiators, hasn't got bathroom or kitchen, your traditional Halifax and Nationwide will not give you uh, a mortgage, let alone any of those uh, buy-to-let mortgage uh, lenders either so what we tend to do is then to use bridging finance it's basically in a short-term financing uh, arrangement that you pay these um, companies um, a higher interest rate and some cost but we'll, we'll talk about some of this um, con uh, cost in a little while but the idea is that you, you know they will then um, finance and take the risk of financing some of these um, properties that are not typically going to be financed by mortgage companies so um so what so, so that's basically what it is um what are the kind of the positives of of uh, bridging finance and using bridging finance uh in my perspective there are you know one of the big ones is is basically if you are finding deals but you don't have enough money to buy them cash uh, or get them on a normal mortgage or any other financing mechanism rather than leaving that below market value deal on the table or unfulfilled you can't sell it on i would always rather that we try to look for a, a bridging finance a reasonable bridging finance deal that will allow us to do that deal so what's the one of the big pros is basically allows you to buy that house that has got no epc no central eating uh, kitchen and bathroom is missing uh, but you know that you're buying it below market value so you can still make a decent profit out of it and recycle all your money out of it as well so that will be my biggest pr uh, positive about bridging finance and their services second it allows you to leverage so just like mortgages it, the bridging finance is also allowing you to leverage your money so you've got 25 percent or 30 percent normally on average 30 35 percent is what uh, deposit that they will ask you to put down so they will lend you 65 percent of the value of uh, what you're buying so uh, you but still you can leverage your money out so instead of putting all of that say a house is worth know, 300 grand instead of buying it cash of 300 grand you only have to put 35 percent of that 300,000 let's say that's around get kind of just under around 100 grand mark so you can leverage your cash and buy something that's 300,000 with only a hundred thousand pounds so that's the second positive of bridging finance bearing in mind of the first one I said that it allows you to do things that you would not necessarily buy on a traditional mortgage um, third, it's, it's short-term lending. So most banks will want you to tie into two-year deal, five-year deal, fixed rate, etc., etc. Short-term finance actually don't want you to do that. They they make their money by recycling their cash in and out of projects fairly regularly at a high velocity. So they lend you for six months, then you know they make a, a few thousand pounds on that money then that money comes back out from you with the interest that they've charged you and then they use that same money to lend to another lend to another borrower and that's how they make their money so because of that they only want you to use their money short term or ideally it's a short term um, cycle that they are looking to to lend on and the last one is actually when it comes to refinancing out that money and that's also a nice relatively easy process if you know what you're doing so typically what would happen is you will buy it uh, with their money 35% of your deposit 65% bridging finance 
you do the works, you add the value, then after uh, you've done that, let's say your typical kind of six months, because, you know, four to six months really, depending on, the, on, on how much work's gone in. Uh, and also more importantly, right now we are in July, 2021. Uh, we're still kind of reading from the COVID effect and land registry usually take around 40 days uh, to register a sale or a purchase right now they're quoting and i spoke to them last week they're quoting up to 144 days to do that so that also then delays your ability to refinance because you need to show on land registry that you own or your company owns that property that's when you'll get other lending from traditional mortgages so in effect you know the you know the other um benefit of um, bridging is they will allow you to refinance you know maybe, maybe let's say at the six months additional or six months period then a bank like Kent Reliance uh, Paragon or somebody like that will then issue you a refinance on that house you then take that refinance pay off the bridging uh, company their capital that they lent you and depending on whether you structure the deal to pay all of the interest at the end uh, or you were servicing the debt as you went along uh, then you will take that refinance money say from a paragon to pay the bridging finance then you move that debt on from bridging into limited company uh, into uh, traditional bank, bank lending like buy to let mortgages so that's kind of the, 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 the kind of the key positive is allowing you to do more and and instead of leaving deals that you wouldn't not necessarily be able to do, it allows you to do that. But the key here is you have to buy something that's below market value, something that you can add value to because as, I, as you hear now, uh, the cons are basically the first one for me is actually it's it's a fairly unregulated market. So depending on who you use as a bridging finance uh lender this these are sometimes unregulated or a lot of the times unregulated companies so what does that mean it basically means that for you know they can say to you when you take the product it will cost you three or four percent of uh, on a monthly basis or actually so typically it should be about one percent zero point eight to one percent at the moment uh, of your uh, loan that you take in you will have to pay that as interest per month but the unregulated part of it, depending on who you use, I mean, there are some really good bridging lenders out there, but there are some really unscrupulous ones out there. So really make sure that you pick the right ones. But the idea is that, you know, because it's unregulated, they can say after six months, if you, if you take a term for six months, but then your project for whatever reason delays and you're not the seventh month, they will put things like um, <clears throat> um, clauses in there that they can whack up the a their fees and b their interest rate as well so all of a sudden you start going from 0.8 percent to two percent per month after six months and uh, they will add another say five grand worth of fees because you've breached that six month term and again you know uh, part of it is a business model because they are banking that, that money coming back at six months so that they can lend it out again so if it doesn't come back they want to then charge you for that um, but the unregulated aspect of it sometimes, depending on who you're working with, they can cost you quite a bit of money and a bit of headaches as well. Second thing is, you know, you also need to be aware of the, 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 the detail of that, of that bridge. So what I mean by that is a simple one would be, do they charge you interest per day or per month? So if they are charging you per day, so if you exit at 173 days, you will pay just 173 days of interest, let alone all the cost that comes with it. But if you're paying it, if they're charging you by a month, so let's say you get to the sixth month or fifth month, and then you roll over one day into the sixth month, guess what? They're gonna charge you that whole month worth of interest as well. It's okay if it's one or 200 pound, but if it's a thousand, two, three, four thousand pound, that's quite a lot of money that you could be potentially in for. So be aware of all the minutia terms and conditions of that um, bridging finance. Third, I think it's quite a costly way of, of, of lending or borrowing, rather, I should say. So there are some cheaper ways out there, but you have to be able to access them. If you can't access them, bridging finance is your only source. You just have to go in it with your eyes open that it is a costlier way of financing property development. Uh, and uh, you're part of that deal, then you need to make sure you're buying the right deal that then factor up all of these costs. And what I mean by costs is bridging typically will co will charge you an arrangement fee uh, and that could range in the thousands i would say so if you're borrowing a hundred thousand you could easily be paying two three four thousand pound with arrangement fee to begin with then they will charge you a survey fee for their surveyors to come to go out and actually survey the actual property that is also 
uh, variable because a big uh, a company may have their own surveyor and then they charge £900 in-house for an in-house surveyor or they can use a outdoor, uh, an outsourced one and they can charge a 300 quid so also check those uh, details so that's the big cost the legals uh, so you will have to pay their legal fee as well as your own legal fee and you'll have to pay basically two solicitors one to act on their behalf and the second one to act on your behalf so because of that then those costs kind of quickly mount up in my head i normally account for about ten thousand pounds on average for a like a, a 150 200 thousand and obviously it scales up more the more you borrow so ten thousand pounds for six months on average will, is what i have in my head but again you know every deal is different the rates are different the costs are different so make sure you just are aware of all these details that i'm talking about now and ask your broker that's, that's another thing to, to bear in mind. Brokers get um, their, you know, you need to know the incentive for brokers here because they're using, you know, bridging finance, use intermediaries to weed out, um, un, you know, people who can't afford it or shouldn't really be lent to. So they use intermediaries like brokers. For, for brokers, what's in it for them is, you know, they make quite a bit of money on their bri on their bridging. So this arrangement fee that I talked about, two, three, four thousand pounds, a lot of the... Uh, bridging finance companies will actually give if not all a lot of that arrangement fee to the brokers so for the brokers it's in their incentive it's in their interest to get that bridge over the line so sometimes they may not not they're hiding from you hiding it from you but they might not give tell you every minutia and quite frankly it's not their job you need to read the details of uh, this daily versus monthly interest you know if you breach how much is that going to cost you what's the entry fee and the exit fee do you have to pay any of those all of that detail so it's very much down to you know buyer beware kind of um, scenario so make sure you are aware of those and um, I mean overall just to kind of um, sum up this video around bridging finance what's my gut about it you know I would say if you can afford to not use bridging finance and use cheaper ways of financing your deals which is your own cash investors uh, uh, funding or if you were remortgaging your own home and you've got funding there at, at let's say right now two percent interest rate that definitely will be the cheapest way of financing your deals but if you can't have that you don't have access to that you're not comfortable about refinancing your own home uh, actually i'll get back to that in a minute and then bridging finance is a is a decent option for you to to go for to not lose a deal if it's the right deal and you know you can clear that extra additional cost of interest and arrangement fees and legal fees, then definitely all day long have a look at bridging finance and pick the best one out of them. Um, just as a side, I, I talked about you know um, risk appetite and taking. Some people say, "Oh, I don't want to uh, remortgage my house because I don't want to put that in jeopardy," but also not realizing that if you take a bridge and you sign a personal guarantee on that bridge yes the first charge will be against the house that you buy uh, with their money but if that's down valued or you they end up selling it because there's no kitchen bathroom and the value of the house has now diminished from what you bought it as you would be in for that uh, deficit in value which means that if you can't pay then they'll go after your house so what i'm trying to say is you know sometimes people think oh if i don't put it if I put it on my company name and uh, it's, I'm going to be safe, my house will be safe. No, not at all, because they'll ask you for personal guarantees, uh, and that personal guarantee will be collateralized by your ass with your asset. So be quite careful about risk understanding and not thinking that it's, it's less risky to borrow on a limited company rather than refinancing your own home at a cheaper rate and using that money to fund your development. Anyway, I hope that's been helpful. Uh, if there's anything. Uh, if you've got any comments, please post it in uh, below in the comments section below. Otherwise, I will um, look forward to your feedback and post new videos um, as I as I come across them really now and I'll think about them. Thanks. See you in the next one.